books are up front in the library of Wyatt. <laughs> Probably all of Neil Gaiman's books. <laughs> That's my go-to author. In the library of Cal. <laughs> Recently I read Charlotte McConaughey's two books. She only has a couple books out and I just loved both of them. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm Wyatt Packard. I'm chair of the Nebraska Library Association's Intellectual Freedom Roundtable and I work for Lincoln City Libraries in Lincoln, Nebraska. And my name is Cal Harmon, and I am also a member of NLA, um, vice chair of the Intellectual Freedom Roundtable under Wyatt, and I also work at Lincoln City Libraries here in Lincoln. Librarians really want to oppose censorship. We're all about the freedom to access information, um, looking at like the Library Bill of Rights and the freedom to read. Um, we really believe that part of our duty is to make information available. Um, and feel really strongly that it's a parent's right and a family's right to choose what types of information they want to consume and how they use that. Um, and really we're there to provide access. That's kind of our, our mission as library workers. It's one thing to um, you know, maybe tell your own children not to read a book or watch a movie because it doesn't align with your family's worldview, but it's a whole entirely different thing to ban resources outright from a community taxpayer-funded collection um, just because they don't align with your family's um, beliefs or worldview. Well, the Library Bill of Rights was established um, by the American Library Association in 1939 um, and it's a list of values basically for the profession. It's our Bill of Rights um, and basically it says that you know we're going to resist censorship, we're going to have information regardless of the origins or the beliefs maybe of the author or their affiliations um, we're going to provide information and access to everyone, regardless of their beliefs or affiliations. Um, and it's really that foundational document. Um, I think another important piece of that is privacy and confidentiality, and that we believe that people should have the right to access information and know that that access will be kept private and confidential. Um, so again, they can explore new ideas that maybe other people or people in their lives would oppose or, or have thoughts on. Um, and it really it is that, that piece that allows us to do a lot of good uh, for different communities. Connecting it to the Constitutional Bill of Rights, um, you know, we know that the First Amendment protects Americans' freedom of expression. Um, and really when we're talking about the Bill of Rights, we're talking about um, and, and intellectual freedom. This concept of intellectual freedom is about the right to access information and ideas um, almost as like a precursor to expressing them because how are you going to express ideas? if they are banned? Um, how are you going to counter ideas um, if you've never been exposed to them? Yeah. Um, so really it's the Library Bill of Rights, as Wyatt said, it's a set of professional and ethical gui guidelines that librarians follow um, to ensure the intellectual freedom of our patrons isn't being infringed upon. If you look at really the founding of America, I mean the First Amendment's there because the founder said people need to be informed, that the only way we can have an effective democracy is to have that sharing of information um, so people can publish and then access that. Um, you know, the written word is really how we can spread ideas um, and recognizing that there is power in information um, and that that really is a belief that we think that people are better to be informed. If we picked materials that only reflected, you know, our own lives and our own experiences, um, we'd be neglecting so much of our community, um, so much of the breadth of human experience, and really neglecting our duties um, as, as information providers and information stewards, really. Libraries add things to the collection um, with a variety of sort of criteria. You know, most um, librarians who select items you know, have master's degrees in library and information science. Um, that's something that we go to school for, you know, to be you know, educated and informed. Um, and when adding items to the collection, you do first consider your community, um, as well as kind of where are the gaps in your collection? Where could you use some more diversity of thought? Um, typically, to add an item, you consider you know, publisher reputation, um, who's the author, um, is it really popular? You know, we're going to buy those New York Times bestsellers because there's a need for them, it's demonstrated. Um, as well as kind of what professional journals are saying, what reviews are saying. Um, to really ensure that it is useful information that will add value to the collection because you know, we are using taxpayer dollars and we want to make sure that it's valued information. We have an obligation to reflect um, and represent marginalized groups in our community through our 
collections and through our programming um, because really at the end of the day we want everyone to maximize the benefits that libraries have to offer. Yeah, I, there's something so powerful about coming in the library and seeing yourself, you know, on a, on a display. That's why we love doing book displays with often underrepresented, um, you know, for holidays or Pride Month and things like that, so you can really highlight things. And people don't always know that libraries have those items in the collection. Um, so being able to, to see that is, I think, a powerful thing. Just generally speaking, like, people should be really engaged within, within their community, um, socially and civically. Um, and you know, if you live in a small town, you might only have one or two library workers at your public library. Um, and so this isn't huge, but just dropping a note of support, um, dropping an email, writing to them, going in and talking to them, saying, you know, I, you know, I'm concerned about these book ban efforts that are kind of sweeping the country. Um, that can mean so much to just that, that isolated library worker sometimes. So in Lincoln, you know, we have a pretty strong team, and, uh, but some people out there, they don't have a b big support system um, like we, we enjoy here. I would say, you know, we're always welcome to have a conversation. You know, if there's a program you want to see happen, is there, if there's a book you want to see added, um, we, want, we want to do that as much as we can and, and really be responsive. Um, and the conversation is always great if you do have concerns. Um, but I think as far as support, yeah, definitely thanking people for what they're doing. If you see something great, let us know and, and let your mayor or city council know, you know what you like um, and, and really show that appreciation. I think that goes a long way. And the last thing I would say is, you know, coming to the libraries um, and like Wyatt said, talk to us, um, but also just, uh, you know, ask us questions that we're, that's what we're here for. We are ultimately here to um, connect you to any resources that you may need. So if you don't know about, you know, professional library ethics, yeah. which, you know, maybe you don't, a lot of people don't. Most people don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, come in and just talk to us and uh, we'll connect you to those resources.